After ten years of the end of the world, Qin Ji regarded food as her destiny. However, once she traveled, she had to give food to others to eat. System. This is a year of famine, do you know how precious food is? Oh, can I exchange it for points? Can you still exchange points for food? It's okay then. This is the story of a post-apocalyptic tycoon reborn from ancient times, taking a few small buns to escape the wilderness, and encountering a black-bellied man. However, when it comes to black-bellied men, it is not certain who is darker than whom. However, she just wants to earn some money to eat and die. If it's not possible, she can just stay in the space and waste her life. However, the development of things seems somewhat unexpected. So, is it possible that this script was taken incorrectly? Keywords of the novel Full-level experts fleeing without pop-ups, full-level experts fleeing without pop-ups, full-level experts fleeing with TXT complete collection download, full-level experts fleeing with the latest chapters to read. Chapter 1 Rebirth from the end of the world to ancient times You are listening at novel full.audio the source has no content or has errors. Chapter 2 External Cheat to Account You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 External Cheat to Account Qin Ji suddenly froze. She clearly heard a hint in her mind, so, is this cheating on her account? Rebirth and travel require cheating. Qin Ji instinctively clenched her right hand into a fist, feeling a little excited. It seemed like the heavens were treating her well, and she had not used up her luck in rebirth. She didn't care about that bunch of little kids anymore, so she closed her eyes and focused on feeling. The group of children, perhaps feeling that she wanted to sleep for a while longer, or perhaps carrying a hint of fear, remained silent and silently gathered around her. The host has the behavior of distributing food. Burns. Points. Five seconds. I don't know if this system is also like this disaster with insufficient energy and fragmented information prompts. Qin Ji worked hard for a long time to finally understand. It turned out that what she received was indeed a system, which was bound to a shopping mall, more precisely a large supermarket. However, to enter this portable supermarket, points were required, and the points came from the host's delivery behavior. Qin Ji's act of distributing the black bread in her hand just now triggered the system. However, due to the limited amount of food provided, she only earned one point, which translates to entering the portable supermarket for five seconds. Five seconds. Qin Ji almost bit her silver teeth, what can she do in five seconds? She has confirmed the rules that after entering the supermarket, she must put the items she receives at the cashier in order to obtain them, and can only enter once a day. Five seconds is not enough to see the product partition clearly, is it? Calming down from the surprise of obtaining the system just now, Qin Ji's brain began to run rapidly. She suddenly opened her eyes and spoke out. Where's the bread? A few children were taken aback and the eldest one quickly reached out to Qin Ji. Big sister, there's one more thing. Qin Ji watched as the dark little hand opened, with a thumb-sized piece of bread lying quietly in her palm. Her emotions were a bit complicated, and an indescribable feeling surged up. After a moment of silence, she reached out and took it over. She looked back and forth before turning her head and handing it to the girl, you eat. The children's faces showed a hesitant expression, and they didn't know what Qin Ji's actions represented. The girl shook her head but didn't answer. Hmm. Qin Ji said in a deep voice that in her past life, she fought hard against zombies and mutated beasts in order to survive. Her body had already condensed into a demonic energy, which was not angry but powerful. At this moment, the change in her face had already scared several children. The girl nervously took the steamed bun, but dared not eat it. Qin Ji waited for another moment, but did not feel any prompts from the system, and the points did not change at all. She didn't believe in evil and snatched the steamed bun from the girl's hand again, handing it to another child, 
but there was still no movement. It seems that the same food cannot be given multiple times, and if that's the case, wouldn't it be a loophole in the system? Qin Ji was very disappointed, but she could only give up. A few children were made anxious by her actions and looked at her with wide eyes, afraid to speak out. Make a fire, I'll go pick up firewood. Qin Ji sighed and prepared to find a place to enter the supermarket. At least she should first get some things out. Sister, let me go with you. The eldest child immediately stood up. No need. Qin Ji's hard words blocked the way back, and the child immediately dared not speak up. It seems that the original person still has some accumulated power in the hearts of these children. They fled all the way, leaving little behind, but the children of poor families were already in charge. Along the way, they would pick up any withered branches and leaves as firewood, and occasionally exchange them for other things besides using them themselves. But there are too many people fleeing from the wilderness, and there is basically nothing left, only some dead tree stumps that cannot be removed by hand, and occasionally seen. A few young people didn't dare to say anything when they heard it. They obediently listened to Qin Ji, the one who carried the firewood, the one who started the fire. Although they were young, they had already mastered a lot of wilderness survival skills. Qin Ji took this opportunity to observe the surroundings. When she woke up earlier, she was in a leeward area with a large stone next to it, forming a sunken area. It was also a good habitat in the wild. Not far from where they were located, there were several groups of refugees, most of whom were also elderly and weak. However, these people looked to some extent stronger than Qin Ji and the others, at least not so impoverished. Even further away, there was a carriage with an elderly old man dozing off on the shaft. The old horse pulling the carriage even had hay to eat. This kind of light, even straw and straw are luxury goods, indicating that this family should also have some financial resources. I'm not afraid of being robbed. Qin Ji muttered a few words, but instead glanced at the horse a few more times. Many animals in previous lives had mutated, and such ordinary animals were rare. I can eat for several days after slaughtering it. No matter how rare it is, it will still be regarded as food in the end. This is the imprint engraved in the bones of hungry and scared people, which cannot be easily changed. Qin Ji pretended to release her hand and squatted down in a hidden place, which was not easy to be detected and was easier to launch attacks. This was a habit she had developed over the years. Trying to flash her mind, she did indeed enter the system. With a bright light in front of her, she was already in a bright room. The room is not big, only about 10 square meters, very similar to the minimalist technology style in science fiction movies. Seeing such a brightly lit place, Qin Ji's eyes suddenly hurt. How long has it been since she saw such a scene? The extremely ordinary room before the end of the world now seems so precious and rare. It must be because the light is too bright that the eyes are pricked and painful. Qin Ji shook her head and let go of the melancholy in her heart. Without much delay, Qin Ji quickly figured out this place. It turned out to be a preparation space before entering the supermarket. Once the start button was clicked, the supermarket door would open and the countdown would begin. She needed to bring the goods to the cashier within five seconds to receive them. Qin Ji is a bit nervous. She doesn't know if she can get any food tomorrow. If there's no food left, she won't be able to earn points, and she won't be able to enter the supermarket. The next time she earns points, she doesn't know when. The room was not large, and the wall facing Qin Ji became a huge screen. In consciousness, the interface of the system became tangible and within reach. Many functions are grayed out, indicating that they were not activated due to insufficient integration, or it is possible that the system does not have enough energy to activate them. Qin Ji took a few deep breaths, trying to calm her excitement. She opened her eyes and silently recalled how the supermarket in her memory was usually arranged. The time is only five seconds, and she cannot choose slowly, so she can only pick up some goods near the cashier. As for what to take, 
of course it's food. If she doesn't eat again, Qin Ji is worried that she and those children won't see the sun tomorrow. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Kang Dai's Physical Fitness. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Kang Dai's Physical Fitness What are usually things next to the supermarket cashier? Qin Ji's impression is a bit vague, after all, after 10 years, many things have become difficult to remember. Battery. Chewing gum. A small umbrella. By the way, there must be chocolate. Qin Ji's eyes lit up, that's it. Small in size and high in heat, it is one of the best choices for supplementing energy. She didn't dare to delay for too long, so she stopped hesitating and took a deep breath before reaching out and tapping the button to open the door. The room was seamlessly integrated, and the walls slowly and silently slid open, revealing rows of shelves filled with goods. Qin Ji's adrenaline was racing at this moment, her gaze fixed like in the apocalypse, ready to fight, her whole body tense and ready to start at any time. As the door opened, a pleasant but clearly electronic synthesized sound began to sound. The countdown has started. Just as the word, inverted, sounded, Qin Ji's body also began to move. Target. Cashier. Qin Ji glanced and immediately locked in the location of the cashier. Like a cheetah's movements, her body leaped out with agility and rushed towards the target I'll go. I almost fell off my horse. Qin Ji cursed fiercely from the bottom of her heart, this body is too slow. Before, she had secretly adjusted and also moved, feeling that she could control this body quite well, but once she started moving quickly, she still couldn't handle it well, even pulling her hips. By blinded the physical abilities of his past life supernatural beings. What a pit father. Qin Ji was extremely angry, but at this moment she couldn't care about these things anymore. When the countdown reached, three, she rushed to the cashier like a bulky elephant and hit the counter heavily. There was no way she could stop it. There is indeed chocolate. Qin Ji reached out to grab the cute brown babies with beautiful outer packaging, and at this moment, the countdown counted out as four. Got it. Qin Ji withdrew her hand and waved her other hand towards the shelf. As she touched a cardboard box and held it tightly, the countdown sounded five. At the same time, Qin Ji slammed her hands onto the cash register. With a flash of light, Qin Ji felt her body sway and her eyes flutter, and then she fell heavily to the ground. She returned to the room before opening the door and lay on the ground in embarrassment. Feeling something in her hand, Qin Ji raised her hand and saw the three chocolates she was holding in her right hand. She silently grinned. Success. It wasn't until then that she relaxed and collapsed to the ground, with even more severe soreness all over her body. What is the other box? Qin Ji raised her other hand, which was an unexpected joy. Hmm. Qin Ji looked at what was in her hand and was stunned for a moment. Is this arranged by the heavens? That box of things, actually a box of milk slices. So, does heaven really have the virtue of good life? Qin Ji raised an eyebrow, and it seemed that the little baby's life should not end. She sat up, reached out and tore open a piece of chocolate, taking a hard bite. It must have been four or five years since she last tasted this kind of chocolate. In the early years of the apocalypse, as long as she had the ability, she could still obtain some leftover supplies, but the situation worsened as the situation worsened. Apart from mutated beasts and plants, it became increasingly difficult to find food to eat. Qin Ji chewed faster and faster, but after trying hard for a long time, she still couldn't swallow what was in her mouth. She couldn't bear to swallow such a rare food. It's just that this body is too weak, mainly due to hunger. She needs to replenish her energy as soon as possible. The remaining rationality prevented her from wasting too much time, and in the end, she ate the whole chocolate bar clean before stopping. Although she was still very hungry, not only physically but also psychologically, she didn't eat any more. 
Years of outdoor combat experience have made her always leave some leeway for herself. Qin Ji took out the milk tablets and hesitated for a while. She restrained herself and did not put them in her mouth. The long lost and pure milk flavor was like a huge temptation to her. Are you really lucky, kid? Nima is still a green food. Qin Ji's lips slightly opened and closed, but there was no sound. She just silently cursed in her heart. After years of fighting, most of her expressions were cursing, but more often than not, she became accustomed to silence and hid everything she wanted to say in her stomach. Quickly flipping through the instructions on the outer packaging, these once extremely ordinary things now seem like a lost civilization, lost and regained, especially precious. The explanation is a text that she can understand, but there is no other information besides the nutrition table. Qin Ji dare not stay in this room for too long. She is afraid of being discovered, and her disappearance and appearance out of thin air can cause great panic. Tearing open the packaging, she broke the chocolate into several pieces, wrapped them inside the collar, and stuffed them around her waist. This ancient clothing was complicated, but it was quite practical for hiding things. The weather is not too hot, and there is a layer of tin foil. As long as it does not stick to the body, it should not melt. She took a plate of breast milk tablets, broke it, and took three pieces. So young children always need to consider hygiene when eating them. It's better to take one piece at a time. Qin Ji ignored the fact that her hand, which had just broken the chocolate, was so dark that she couldn't see the color of her skin. Anyway, those big ones were just as casual. It's such a world. There's no such thing as being so particular. Qin Ji was moved and left the room. Sure enough, she was once again in the wilderness. She felt a stir in her heart and quietly tried, only to find that the place was called a room, but it was actually just a portable space. Even when people were outside, they could easily access things according to their hearts. In this way, chocolates and other items didn't need to be carried with them, so they could be used and taken any time. Well, this is an unexpected joy. She looked around, but it seemed like nothing had happened and everything was calm. She relaxed a little and casually knocked down a half-person tall withered tree stump beside her, pulling it back. Although this body has not yet fully fused and sometimes feels stiff, its specific strength is immense, almost as strong as it was after awakening her abilities in a previous life. Sure enough, Zayabazi, Hercules, and a portable supermarket are really the standard accessories for escaping famine. Sister. You're back. Big sister, you're so quick. You found such a big stick so quickly. Qin Ji let out a casual nod, but her heart couldn't help but move. She seemed to have been in space for several minutes, right? How did it come out? It seems like it hasn't been long. It's not even dark. The fire had already started, and Qin Ji erected the tree stump she had just found. It was not easy to burn, but after burning, it would be very durable. It should be enough to deal with this night. A half-sided earthenware jar stood by the fire, burning about half a bowl of water inside. The little baby was humming and groaning on the side, its voice becoming increasingly faint and almost imperceptible. Qin Ji's heart tightened. If there was no more food to eat, the child might not be able to hold on for long. The water boiled, and the eldest boy carefully placed a piece of rag on it, pouring a little into a bowl that was only half torn. Fortunately, the bowl was still relatively clean. The water was only a mouthful, and the boy put the bread that was only half the size of a fingernail into it, gently rolling it with a branch, apparently for the baby to eat. Can such a big child eat this thing? End of this chapter Chapter 4 Youth on the Carriage You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Youth on the Carriage Qin Ji searched in the original owner's memory and found that the baby, nicknamed Nan Nan, was already seven months old. However, due to lack of nutrition, it was born extremely thin and weak, appearing to be only two or three months old. She felt a little relieved and could eat complimentary foods in seven months. 
Although it would be good to have a stutter in the apocalypse and such chaotic times, it is also good to be more considerate. Quickly, the things in the bowl became a mess, and the little girl carefully used a relatively smooth, flat wooden piece that was not much larger than a toothpick to pick and feed it into the girl's mouth. The starving baby licked its mouth and ate with a clattering sound. A few little furry heads sat quietly around the fire, trying not to look over there, and made a sticky bread that tasted even more fragrant and had a greater impact on the hungry group of them. It was completely dark, and not far away, piles of bonfires began to be lit, flickering like phosphorescent flames. Qin Ji secretly took note that in this situation, these half-aged children could easily be treated as prey. She was forced into a hurry and could do anything. She had seen many cannibalistic things in her past life. I secretly sensed that her abilities could not be brought over, but her senses were noticeably more sensitive than ordinary people. In addition, this body was already very strong and could barely protect itself. But some precautions need to be taken, at least some traps need to be set up to provide early warning. As for the food, she doesn't plan to take it out yet. At this moment, there are still people walking around from time to time, so be careful. The girl, who was tired from crying, was reluctantly comforted by the blurriness and finally fell into a deep sleep. The surroundings became quieter, and the night became even darker. The surroundings quieted down, and a few small furry heads were also swaying around. They were clearly exhausted, yawning incessantly, but they dared not really sleep. In the wilderness, if they were taken away by wild beasts, it was not for fun, let alone more terrifying than beasts. Humans The phenomenon of cannibalism is not a strange news in times of famine. Qin Ji stood up and divided the branches into several piles. He lit three bonfires outside the big stone, which happened to surround their position inside, so as to prevent wild animals and make it warmer. Their possessions were pitifully scarce, except for a few tattered pots, pans, ladles, and pots. Which were actually only half-pulled pottery bowls and some relatively smooth tree branches and wood pieces, and only a few pieces of rags. They didn't even have a complete thin bed, so if there was anything else, they would have exchanged it for food long ago. The only relatively intact one is a bamboo tube that can be used to hold water, and it has already cracked a hole. Be careful not to let the water spill out. At such times, water is also very precious. A few little furry heads listened to Qin Ji's arrangement and leaned against the stone wall to make a pile. If there was nothing to do this night, they should be able to barely make it through. As for what would happen tomorrow, let's wait until the sun comes out. The fire was almost burned, leaving only some charcoal and slightly weak flames. The light was much dimmer, and there was much less movement around. For Qin Ji, this darkness actually gave her more sense of security. The little furry heads were not sleeping very peacefully, hungry, and even when they were tired, it was difficult to fall asleep. Qin Ji approached them a little closer and whispered, don't make a sound or open your eyes later. Perhaps these children were afraid of their original bodies, or perhaps Qin Ji's solemn expression and cold voice at this moment. Several children suddenly woke up from half-dreaming, nodded subconsciously, and even immediately covered their mouths with their hands. Qin Ji touched a piece of chocolate in her hand, held it in her palm, used her body as a barrier, and quickly stuffed it into a child's mouth. She also took care of the tattered cloth pieces on the children's bodies, as if a careful elder sister cared for her siblings and covered them with blankets. The child suddenly felt something stuffed into his mouth, licking it with his tongue, and a bitter, sweet, and slippery smell came from. Hm eating. He opened his eyes wide and almost screamed in surprise. Hmm. Qin Ji glanced over and made the child shudder. Subconsciously, she closed her eyes and shrank into a ball. Qin Ji processed it as usual, stuffing a piece of chocolate into each child's mouth. There is no need to say much about the deep regret in the hearts of a few young children, but Qin Ji had warned them in advance and understood that in their situation, anyone who was found to have something to eat could immediately bring trouble. 
They all tightly closed their mouths and eyes, only daring to silently sip that strange piece of food in their mouths. Big sister. What about yours? The eldest boy murmured softly. Qin Ji glanced at him sideways, and the fierce expression on her face successfully made the other person lower their head, afraid to say more. That's so much talk, I can't stop talking even if I have food to eat. Qin Ji muttered inwardly, then picked up the girl from her arms and said, I don't know how to feed some water if I haven't eaten anything. She looked both fierce and fierce at the moment, and the heads of the children lowered a little. But they had an unprecedented sense of stability in their hearts, and the elder sister actually went to find food for them. The girl suddenly left her warm embrace and woke up, with a grin that was about to cry. Qin Ji's eyes were quick and her hands were quick. With a little movement, half of the milk tablet was put into her mouth. The little girl immediately pursed her lips and started smacking. Qin Ji sat diagonally with her back facing outside, covering the girl tightly to avoid being seen. Although the night was dark, being careful was not harmful. She still took the piece of wood and dabbed some water on her mouth from time to time. The little girl enjoyed eating more. She grew up eating rice soup batter when she was young, and when did she eat dairy products? A few children were both surprised and delighted. Their elder sister fainted once, as if she had changed people. She suddenly took out some strange food and went out of her way, even hugging a girl. This was even more outrageous than the sun rising from the west. Although they were afraid of Qin Ji, no matter how fierce Qin Ji was, he gave them something to eat, which made the children feel as if they had taken a reassuring pill. They were immediately satisfied, and a full sense of security arose. Although my parents are gone, my elder sister is still here. She didn't leave them behind and even found food for everyone. The night is long, but the sun always rises. The children of the Qin family have slept soundly this night, and they haven't had enough to eat and sleep like this for a long time. For countless people who sleep hungry, having a piece of chocolate with high calorie content is enough to satisfy them. The gray sky began to brighten, and Qin Ji fed a piece of milk tablet to the girl. The other children also fed a piece of chocolate alone. She told the little girl to be careful not to let the girl choke and planned to pick up some dead branches to carry with her. Along the way, there were people fleeing from famine everywhere, and wherever they went, it was difficult to even pick up firewood. It's rare that there were still some dead tree stumps here, so we need to make more preparations. These dead tree stumps were left behind because most of the disaster victims had no tools to remove, but for Qin Ji, it was not a problem. She was strong enough to break them off. Hello. Qin Ji had just bypassed a large stone and planned to pull out several withered tree stumps next to him as firewood when he suddenly heard someone shouting. She turned her head and saw the carriage she had seen last night. At this moment, a young man was poking his head out of the carriage window and waving at her. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Secret Discovered You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Secret Discovered Qin Ji stood still and turned to face the other person without saying a word. Her heart was a bit shaken. She hadn't seen such a clean and tidy person for a long time. Although the 18.year.old boy in front of her was a bit disheveled, he was really much better than others. At least, the clothes were neatly dressed, the texture looked different from ordinary fabrics, and he seemed to look decent. The young man felt a little embarrassed when he saw her cold and indifferent appearance. He touched his nose and said. Well, are you interested in making a deal? I have some cakes here. As he spoke, he took a cloth bag from his side and opened it. It was indeed some pancakes, the same kind of white flour pancakes, or more accurately, some mixed flour pancakes. But compared to the half-pulled black bread last night, this can really be considered white flour. What for? Qin Ji's heart fluctuated a bit more. She was worried about not being able to find food, so someone came to deliver it to her door. Although she shared the chocolate and milk slices with a few kids last night, 
the system's points indeed increased, reaching as many as 10 points. One point can be exchanged for 5 seconds, and it has been 50 seconds since she entered the supermarket. If it weren't for only being able to enter the supermarket once a day, and Qin Ji also wanted to try to increase her points during the day, she would have gone in early in the morning to get some more things. If she gets these cookies and shares them with others, won't she have the points again? As Qin Ji asked, she calmly surveyed the surroundings. At this moment, the sky was slightly brighter and many people were walking, but the place where the carriage was parked was relatively quiet. If we were to take action here, it would not be impossible. However, there was also a coachman who, although looking old, couldn't take it lightly. She didn't want to capsize the boat again in the sewer. Qin Ji quickly calculated in her mind, but the young man didn't see it at all. Qin Ji had already started to figure out how to deal with herself, but instead showed a big smile and said, Don't worry, I really want to make a deal with you. You don't have to worry about my coachman, he's deaf and mute, he can't hear anything. What to exchange for? Qin Ji lowered her voice and asked again, then approached the other person calmly. The young man smiled even more sincerely. His long hair was tied high and a bit messy. Although his appearance was a bit rough, it didn't damage his appearance. Coupled with such a smile, he looked like a handsome man in ancient costume who came out of a picture book. I just want to exchange a few chocolates, he said Qin Ji froze suddenly, her blood all over her body as if frozen. Looking at the picturesque young man in front of her, she suddenly seemed to be looking at a demon. The young man's smile also froze. He suddenly felt that the girl in front of him, although not moving at all, was still maintaining the same movement as before. However, he suddenly felt that the other person's whole body emitted a wave of evil energy, and murderous energy. No, 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 I didn't mean anything, really, really. The young man instinctively shouted, but it was already late. Qin Ji moved, and he only saw Qin Ji move. The next second, he felt himself heavily crushed inside the carriage, his face pressed against the bottom of the carriage. In that instant, Qin Ji's hand had already grabbed the young man's throat and directly pushed him into the carriage. But even if she extended her hand and half of her arm through the carriage window, she did not put her head in, but instead kept a watchful eye, guarding the surrounding environment. Please spare your life. The young man only had time to say such a sentence and felt like he couldn't catch his breath. Are you going to die? Fuck your uncle. This girl, no, this aunt is a bad star. Who are you? Qin Ji burst out three words from between her teeth. Qin Ji's voice sounded so ethereal to the boy, as if it came from the sky, but to him it was no less than the sound of heaven. She didn't directly take her own life indicating that there was still a glimmer of hope, right? Then he felt as if he could breathe, and his neck was slightly loosened from being choked. Xia, spare your life. I really have no ill intentions. I also traveled here. We are fellow villagers. Crosser. Qin Ji was taken aback for a moment, and her hands relaxed a bit. Say, he said the young man exerted force and broke free from Qin Ji's hand, flipped over and coughed a few times while caressing his neck. His body had instinctively retreated far away and pressed against the wall of the carriage on the other side. Vexia. Anti. Mississippi. I really have no ill intentions. I just want to hug my thigh, and I have traveled through time. Last night, I saw you holding chocolate and I knew that you must be the chosen son of this plane, ah no, the chosen daughter. Please, don't kill me, I just want to hug my thigh. The young man spoke anxiously and incoherently. He really regretted it. In that second, he thought he was really going to be killed. If he had to start over again, he would definitely take a detour. What kind of fellow townspeople are not fellow townspeople? It's too scary. Qin Ji's eyes shrank slightly, and the person in front of her seemed to be speaking truthfully. Otherwise, he wouldn't have known any chocolates, let alone said any faces or choices. 
However, this is not enough to make her relax her guard. Seeing Qin Ji remain silent all along, the boy's heart slightly receded. It was really scary just now, and he was truly afraid that his little life would be pinched away by her. Are you really holding the script of the female lead? Not to mention the cheats, the combat effectiveness is still so strong. What I'm saying is true. Why don't you ask me about modern things? I know everything about mobile phones, computers, cars, and cannons. If you're not in a hurry, I can tell you all about my life. I can also tell you the secret code, what, the king covers the earth and tigers, even if they change. It's not necessary. Qin Ji coldly said that she had regained her senses from the shock of just learning that the other party was also a traveler. The young man could see with his naked eyes that the evil energy on her body had dissipated, and the heart she was carrying finally came to rest. This could be considered a close escape. Well. If you don't mind, you can ride in my carriage. Really, I swear, I'm not a bad person. I have food, money, and I can give it to you. The young man knelt in the carriage, earnestly holding up his fingers and making an oath. Qin Jiding fixed his gaze on him. The other person's gaze was clear, and his eyes were so. Pretty. What do you want to exchange for? Chocolate. Qin Ji withdrew her gaze, and it seemed that the young man had no ill intentions. Moreover, his identity as a traveler also piqued Qin Ji's interest. Coming to this unfamiliar place of life, having someone from the same future is better than not having one. As for finding a way to go back, she has no intention of doing so. Going back is also the end of the world. Although this is ancient, no matter how backward the conditions are, it is better to leave than to have zombies. Do you really have any cheats? Do you have some kind of portable space, system, or farm? Ling Quan. You can have chocolate, but can you have a portable warehouse or supermarket? Seeing that Qin Ji had calmed down and the teenage crisis had been resolved, he suddenly became enthusiastic and once again fearlessly pursued the question. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Heroes, Stay You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Heroes, Stay Suddenly mentioned by the young man about the system and the portable supermarket, Qin Ji's heart tightened, and the sense of crisis that her secrets were being peaked at arose. He he, don't be nervous. It's all written like this in novels. He he, I'm just a little excited, really, a little excited. I've traveled through time and there's nothing, such as a chosen child. It's not even possible. I'm on my own, weak, and initially thought about making some glass soap, but I don't know how to do it. I'm not lucky, and I haven't encountered any opportunities at all. Sigh. The young man rubbed his hands and apologized, saying that even when he didn't speak, he looked still. With a slight adjustment, he could be considered a handsome man in ancient costume. However, his mouth was full of chatter, and he lost all his temperament. The most devastating thing is that there's not even a person to talk to. Do you know that there's such a big secret in my heart, but no one can say it? This feeling, TSK. It's even more uncomfortable than killing me. You talk a lot. Qin Ji only uttered this sentence, she is not like this person, who speaks a lot and is naturally familiar. Give it to me. Ha! The young man who was about to speak was taken aback. Cake. Oh, oh, oh. The young man quickly handed over the cloth bag with both hands. Qin Ji reached out and flipped through her collar, but in fact, she took out half a chocolate bar from the space and threw it onto the boy's robe. It's not that she wants to be so rude, it's that she won't get too close to others, let alone hand over something to give others an opportunity to take advantage of. Xia and V, stay here. The young man saw Qin Ji turning around to leave and quickly shouted loudly. If you don't mind, I can let you ride in my carriage. Qin Ji stopped and turned to look at him. The young man saw a scene and quickly took advantage of the heat to hit the railway. Look, 
you're with a group of children, and I'm the only one. Besides, having a carriage always makes things easier, isn't it? Besides, we're all fellow villagers. It's better to fight alone than to fight alone. The young man spoke impeccably on the phone, and Qin Ji looked at him, then at the carriage, pondered for a moment, and then tacitly agreed. Quickly, a few young children got into the carriage, and Qin Ji and the boy walked behind the carriage, continuing their journey. Qin Ji didn't spend much time talking, so many young people who spoke these words learned about his situation. The young man's name is Qing Qi, and he is a wealthy merchant's illegitimate son outside the city of Yuzhou. In the year of the Great Wilderness, when there was also a war, the whole family was preparing to flee to Yongli Prefecture. There were many descendants in the Qing family, but Qing Qi was an unwelcome illegitimate son, only protected by a few weak and old servants. After parting ways with everyone, except for a deaf and mute coachman, those servants all took advantage of the situation and ran around, unsure whether they were looking for a way to survive or searching for the Qing family's team. Qin Ji was exposed to his secret by Qing Qi and was very wary of him. However, as he said, this place was unfamiliar to him, and they both came from the same place. There was a different kind of familiarity in their hearts, which was too attractive. Even Qin Ji, who was as hard as iron, could not resist. So, did you just wear it? I'm so miserable. I wore it when I was three years old, and I don't know if it was the canon fodder script I took. It didn't show any outstanding talent, nor did you encounter any soaring opportunities. Sai, you don't even know what kind of days I've been living these years. Ching Chi and Qin Ji walked side by side, murmuring softly. Too much talk. Qin Ji is not an introverted person, but her years of fighting in the apocalypse have taught her to be silent and not accustomed to excessive communication with others. Isn't it my fellow villager meeting my fellow villager? Oh, by the way, do you really have one? What is that? Portable space. Do you have farmland? If you have some spiritual spring, can you really wash marrow and cut tendons? However, I think it's mostly a warehouse or supermarket. Dot. Qin Ji no longer wants to have a conversation with him. Not to mention that she has become accustomed to silence and has long been accustomed to communicating with others. Even with Qing Qi's level of nagging, normal people would be annoyed by him and become autistic. In addition to Qing Qi's words, which upset her a little, Qing Qi's intuition was amazing. What he said intentionally or unintentionally was that his secret was trapped. She didn't want to respond any further, otherwise, the person in front of her might have dug up all her secrets. By the way, do you have any system or something? Maybe you got the script for the Empress. The system is in your hands, and I have it in the world. This plane is in your bag. Ching Chi didn't see Qin Ji's black face at all. He spoke on his own, completely unaware that he had accidentally guessed Qin Ji's cheat. Qin Ji silently looked up at the sky, decisively blocking the other party's words and concentrating to open the system to check her points. Qing Chi's bag of pancakes was generously taken into her bag, with each child sharing half of it. Although she had surplus food, she couldn't afford to spend it recklessly. But even so, she still feels very sorry. People who have not experienced the end of the world will not understand the panic of extreme food scarcity. Even the current extreme poverty disaster is much better than the catastrophic disaster in the apocalypse. Qin Ji needs to work hard to provide sufficient psychological construction for herself in order to calmly distribute the food she receives to others. I can't bear to let go of my child, but I can't keep a wolf in my mouth. The food I'm giving out now will be ten times, a thousand times more than I can get in the supermarket later. Besides, are these food? No. These are points that can be exchanged for more food, points. Sure enough, all the food sent out by her can be exchanged for points. This wave of food distribution has also exchanged for ten points. Qin Ji also found that the points exchanged for external food are much more than those exchanged for supermarket food. Qin Ji breathed a slight sigh of relief in her heart. 
With this time, she had the confidence to get more food. By the way, are these all your siblings? Are they all surnamed Qin? Cheng Qi did not receive a response from Qin Ji, but it did not affect his chatter at all. After a while, he had already shifted the topic to a few furry kids. This time, because he was talking about an ordinary topic, his voice did not deliberately decrease. Several children in the carriage heard his words and stretched out their heads. The eldest child said, Brother Cheng, I'm Qin De. Brother Cheng, I'm Qin Wu. Brother Cheng, I'm Qin San. Brother Cheng, I am Qin Xin Yang. Oh, I got it. The youngest one is Lun Yang, right? Cheng Qi is worthy of wearing it a few years ago, and with a few efforts, he managed to arrange the rankings of the children. In this era, there was still male superiority and female inferiority. Generally, only boys were counted in the family ranking, while girls were ranked separately. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Entering the Supermarket Again You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Entering the supermarket again Qin Ji's original identity was Lady Qin, and there was also Qin Er Nyang who died young. However, Qin San Nyang was on the road a few days ago and ran away with a wealthy merchant's team. Now following Qin Ji are several boys, Qin De, Qin Er, Qin San, Qin Wu, as well as a girl, Qin Si Nyang, and the sixth-ranked girl. As for Qin Si and Qin Wu Nyang, they probably couldn't survive either. Perhaps it was Ching Chi who was talkative, outgoing, and friendly, and even gave everyone some pancakes to eat. The children were very friendly to him, but instead had a sense of awe towards Qin Ji. Although Ching Chi's carriage was old, it was not too small. Qin Ji and Ching Chi could sit for a while when they were tired, but the horses walked even slower. They rarely got on the carriage, only when they needed to eat, they would get into the carriage and sit for a while to avoid being noticed. Wealth is not revealed, and in the current situation, eating a little bit is likely to lead people to take risks. As they turned onto the main road, there were even more refugees. Looking around, they were all refugees fleeing from famine. People who starved to death could be seen on the roadside from time to time. Those refugees who had lost their loved ones were desperate and couldn't even cry. More people were numb in their eyes, mechanically moving forward. Perhaps at some point, they exhausted their strength and fell down, unable to get up again. It is not an exaggeration to say that such a miserable situation is a human purgatory. Qin Ji, accustomed to the tragic image of the end of the world, had already become as hard as iron in her heart. However, Cheng Qi seemed to find it difficult to accept. Her face turned pale, she remained silent, not knowing what was on her mind. A few kids stayed in the car, but they were all very quiet. Only the little girl would occasionally hum a few times, but with milk slices and water-soaked noodles, they didn't cry like before. Almost all of them slept after eating. Sister. Qin De timidly poked his head out. Qin Ji glanced over and instinctively trembled, no, there's no water left. I, we want to. Stay here. Qin Ji immediately rejected his idea of going to find water. Although they have been saving and saving, there was not much water along the way, and all their water was gone. I don't have any water left, I only dare to moisturize my lips along the way. Cheng Qi whispered to Qin Ji, with a hint of anticipation in his eyes. So, do you have a way? Qin Ji was very speechless, and the other person's face was almost dazzled with the two big characters, Lin Quan, written on it. You're overthinking it. Ha, you really don't have any spiritual spring. So, the farm doesn't seem to have much hope either. It must be a portable store, right? Qing Qi leaned closer and whispered, successfully making Qin Ji's face change, this guy. You are really a good hand at using other people's words. Don't, 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 I'm just chatting casually. Really, the emperor is above me, and I have no ill intentions. 
Otherwise, let me make five thunderbolts. After finishing, he lowered his voice and whispered, there's no seasoning pack for eating instant noodles. Qin Ji rolled her eyes and said, this guy doesn't forget to want to talk nonsense anytime and anywhere. But you must have a way, right? Ching Chi persisted and asked quietly. Qin Ji looked up at the sky in silence, and after a while, she said. Water bag. Ching Chi was overjoyed and quickly flipped out three or four sheepskin water bags from the carriage to give to Qin Ji. Stop the car. Qin Ji said expressionlessly. There were refugees all along the way, and there probably wasn't any secluded place for Qin Ji to enter or exit. It might as well be on the carriage. Ching Chi's eyes lit up and he quickly called out a few children to come down. Those who needed to be relieved, those who needed to be ventilated. The old coachman quietly moved to the other end of the carriage shaft, curled up as if afraid to approach Ching Chi and his group. Qin Ji's gaze paused slightly, and she glanced at the bundle wrapped around the coachman's waist and back, feeling a little relieved in her heart. This old man probably still has a lot of food and water, to prevent himself and these few dolls from sharing his food. I'll go lie down for a while. Qin Ji got on the carriage. Although she couldn't let Qing Chi go, there was no other way to deal with the situation at the moment, so she had to wait and see. Thanks to Ching Chi's bag of pancakes, her points can now be exchanged for three minutes, and she can get some more things. I don't know if the goods in this supermarket will be taken up one day. Qin Ji couldn't care about anything else. As soon as she got on the carriage, a fleeting thought entered the space. Sure enough, the redeemable time displayed on the big screen was over three minutes. Qin Ji didn't use up all the points and only redeemed them for three minutes, leaving some room for improvement. Quickly recalling the situation in the supermarket in her heart, she didn't have much time yesterday and only came to take a few glances at the goods near the checkout. Today, she wanted to get some dry food like compressed biscuits. Regardless of the nutrition, at least it should be full. Moreover, compressed biscuits are less likely to reveal their contents, and chocolates are still too eye-dot catching. Also, you need to get some water. The supermarket has bottled water, so there shouldn't be any problem with this. Qin Ji went through everything she needed in her mind and didn't miss anything before clicking the button. The countdown began and she quickly ran into the supermarket. Although it was three minutes, Qin Ji didn't dare to procrastinate. She quickly found the pastry area, but fortunately, it wasn't too far from the cashier. Looking at those dazzling dim sum, she couldn't help shedding tears of excitement around her mouth. So much food. She suppressed the impulse, her gaze quickly shifted, and soon found the compressed biscuit. I reached out and hugged her tightly. This ancient belt and collar were indeed practical. She hugged her hand without stopping, regardless of whether it was scattered on the ground or not. She turned around and walked away. Of course, when she turned around, she would not let go. She protected the things in her arms with one hand and kept pulling with the other, hugging whatever she saw. By the countdown of one minute and twenty seconds, she had already run to the cashier, threw them away, and then turned back to fetch water. I'm going to die, there's no shopping cart or shopping bag here, we have to go back and forth. With only fifty seconds left in the countdown, she finally found the bottled water, but did not find the larger one. She could only hug the 500 milliliters one and hurriedly ran to the cashier. I don't know how the system defines it, but if I don't make it to the checkout counter, will it not count? Qin Ji dare not gamble. At the last five seconds, she finally put all the water in her arms onto the cashier and reached out to grab a handful of milk slices. Of course, she couldn't miss the chocolate either. Time's up. The countdown is over. Qin Ji and a bunch of things returned to the operation room. This time, she didn't fall to the ground, nor did she feel the same discomfort as last time. It's really good. Seven bottles of water were mixed, and a pile of compressed dry food was estimated to be around 20 yuan. The rest were miscellaneous pastries and snacks. End of this chapter
Chapter 8. Feels Missing 1 Billion. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Feels Missing 1 Billion These compressed dry rations were made to the size of a thumb, and she hugged them a lot. However, she stumbled and stumbled along the way. When she finally reached the cashier, there were only about 20 yuan left, along with a few small cakes and bread, and a few packets of nuts. Not much. Although she had picked up a lot, most of them fell to the ground while running. I caught three or four boards of milk slices, each with twelve pieces. Plus yesterday's box, along with dry food, it's enough for the little girl to eat for a few days. I lost a lot today. I didn't take the milk slices out of the box, so I couldn't take out the whole box. After all, I still suffered from the loss of not having a shopping cart. Chin Ji cursed softly. No, there's no shopping cart. You can bring a shopping bag or something. Looking back at Ching Chi, he is a wealthy young man. He definitely has a cloth bag or something. If it doesn't work, he can even take the cloth bag that contains the pancakes. Chin Ji was very regretful. She was still not prepared and wasted an opportunity. I feel like I missed a billion. I'm not happy. Qin Ji twisted open a bottle, looked up and gulped down half of it before feeling a hint of pleasure. In the end of the world, except for the first few months, there was actually no shortage of water because those with water-related abilities could exchange enough water as long as they had supplies. However, Qin Ji still felt that the water in her hand was sweeter, as it was an unpolluted water source. Although she was still unsatisfied, she didn't continue drinking. She twisted open a bottle again and carefully poured it into the water bottle. Fill the two water sacks half full, and she won't continue. Seeing the strawberry-flavored cake on the side, she couldn't help but tear open a bag and started eating it in large gulps. A common small cake, before the end of the world, many people despised it. There were too many additives and the taste was not good enough, but after experiencing so much, Qin Ji even ate it with tears in her eyes. With food in her hand, she didn't panic and successfully obtained food the second time. Qin Ji's heart stabilized a lot. With such cheats, as long as she kept a low profile, not to mention in ancient times, even in the end world, she could live very well. This time, she didn't unpack the packaging again. Anyway, when she went out, she could easily take out the things in the space, and there was still time to unpack them again. With a thought, Qin Ji was once again on the carriage. Perhaps her movements caused the carriage to sway for a moment, but in no time, Qing Chi lightly tapped on the carriage wall outside, but remained silent. Qin Ji lifted the curtain, opened the car window, and met Qing Chi's concerned gaze. She raised her hand and made an okay gesture, and Ching Chi breathed a clear sigh of relief and grinned again. Is my carriage comfortable to sit in? Look, here, there, and those places are all cabinets that can hold a lot of things. Ching Chi blinked his eyes, and Qin Ji understood instantly. He made excuses for himself so that he could panic and claim that he had taken these foods from Ching Chi's hands. Others might suspect or not, but there was no problem dealing with Qin and his half year old children. Thinking about Ching Chi Ji's seemingly unintentional knocking on the car wall, Qin Ji's perception of him changed again. Although he seemed reckless, he could actually be considered meticulous and thoughtful. That is, how could a well dressed handsome man have a mouth? Bring the cake, I'll go change the water. Qin Ji covered the two half filled water sachets with clothes, holding the empty ones in her hand, intending to go around to cover up the situation. Ching Chi understood and leaned onto the carriage. From Qin Ji's gaze, he opened a cabinet. Inside was the bag that Qin Ji had just put in. Of course, it contained the compressed dry food, and all of his cakes had already been handed over to Qin Ji. This is also one of the things that Qin Ji is willing to go with him. This guy, I don't know if he has a deep plan, actually gave all his food and water to Qin Ji. Qin Ji suspected that he was planning to rely on him, but anyway, it made her less wary of him. You guys, rest up now, 
hurry up and get in the car. Qin Ji threw a few more children into the car. They were too I dot catching, so it would be better to hide them in the car. Quickly, Qin Ji circled around and returned. Her body was unusually tall, estimated to be 1.7 meters tall, with a dirty and black face and a neutral outfit. In fact, it was just men's clothing, which is a short fight commonly worn by working people. At first glance, it looked like an ordinary man, but it didn't attract much attention. Qin Ji returned and got on the carriage before taking out the two water bags. Save some drinking. She took an empty water bag, poured some that was barely enough for the children to drink for half a day, and then collected all the other water. Big sister is so amazing. Big sister, thank you for your hard work. Sister. Waves of rainbow air began to drift again. Everyone keep their mouths shut. Qin Ji glanced coldly, successfully silenced the sound, and then took out the cloth bag containing the food from her arms. Each person handed out a compressed biscuit, but of course, she had already peeled off the packaging. Sister. The eyes of the children were all straight. This was a dream, right? I only ate the pancake in the morning, and now I have something to eat again. And the bread in my hand is still so fragrant. If anyone sees him, I'll throw him down. Qin Ji's pressure successfully silenced several young people. But because Qin Ji used an excuse to say that these were all food exchanged with Qing Qi, the children still whispered their thanks to Qing Qi. While the children were not paying attention, Qin Ji quietly handed the cloth bag to Qing Qi. Is it all for me? Qing Qi sat on the carriage shaft, facing away from the coachman, and asked quietly. Qin Ji nodded slightly unnaturally. Ching Chi glanced into the bag and his eyes couldn't help but brighten. Thank you, he said, do you have a big bag? Qin Ji asked him in a low voice. Ching Chi thought for a moment and said, it's not too big, it's all similar to this one, but I have a few cloaks and a few backpack skins. Can I use them? Qin Ji's eyebrows furrowed slightly. It's really not possible. Just sew these together and you can make a big bag, but where can I find the needle and thread? Do we need another chance to go to the supermarket to get it? Everyone remained silent, and upon closer inspection, it was evident that they were all quietly eating with their mouths pursed. Having seen too many ugly things, these children have also learned to guard against others at a young age. Sister, this water is really delicious. Five years old, but small in stature, Qin Wu looked like he was only three years old. Suddenly, he leaned in and leaned against Qin Ji, speaking softly. Qin Ji's body stiffened as she hadn't been so close to anyone in many years. Subconsciously, he wanted to push Qin Wu away, but then regained his senses and abruptly stopped his movements. Shut up! Qin Ji said coldly, but Qin Wu grinned and didn't care about her attitude, but he also withdrew and happily squeezed with the others. The little girl was holding milk tablets and felt a bit drowsy. Qin Xinyang took good care of her with a dignified and meticulous demeanor, her familiar movements were a bit heartbreaking, but also reassuring. Qin De reached out to pick it up and said, Fourth sister, why don't you take a break too? Qin Xinyang was about to say no more when she looked up and saw Qin Ji's impatient gaze. She couldn't help but feel a chill in her heart and quickly handed the girl to Chinda. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Have you never been beaten before, have you? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Have you never been beaten before, have you? Seeing that everyone had something to eat, Qin Ji also reached out and took a piece, put it in her mouth, and handed her pocket to Qin Xinyang. You keep an eye on it, don't let anyone see it, she said from yesterday to today, Qin Ji observed that these children have no inherent flaws, and leaving some food for them is also reassuring. Qin Xinyang was taken aback and said, Sister, you should still hold this. Shut up. Qin Ji forcefully dropped a sentence and jumped off the carriage. There are many people, and the carriage is moving too slowly. 
The silent old coachman seemed unconscious, only faithfully driving his horse. If it weren't for occasionally seeing him stop and eat some dry food, Qin Ji would almost suspect that he was a dummy. The old coachman's dry food and Qing Qi's were separated, and the water was also packed separately. Qin Ji knew that his grain was still sufficient, so she did not distribute it to him again. The food in her hand was easily taken out, which was still suspicious. Moreover, even if she knew that sharing food with others could earn points, for Qin Ji, sharing the food in her hand was already a very torturous behavior. Besides, according to her observation, the old coachman should have also taken precautions against himself and the children, and deliberately kept a distance, so she was so happy that she didn't have to share what he ate. On this section of the road, there were a few people, so Cheng Chi got off the car and walked side by side with Qin Ji. So, is your supermarket only allowed to take a few things at a time, and is there a time limit? Qin Ji's blood almost condensed all over her body, and a sudden evil energy enveloped her whole body. Don't be nervous, I just guessed. Cheng Chi suddenly felt as if he was suddenly immersed in an ice cave, and quickly said. Qin Ji's rationality allowed her to slowly regulate her breathing and restore calmness, but the killing intent in her eyes was still visible to the naked eye. He he, come on, I. I'm really just guessing. Look, you're looking for pockets with me, and you have a lot of things to take. It's hard not to guess, right? Qin Ji silently wiped a sweat from her heart. She made a mistake, why did she get involved with this guy? With so many devilish intentions, she didn't reveal much of herself. How could she be tricked into revealing a secret by him in just a few moments? Don't think too much. As someone like me, I like to guess blindly. Sometimes, based on your reaction, I guess I know if I guess right or wrong. Hee <laughs> hee, don't worry, I really have no malicious intent. Besides, we are also partners now, right? We're a team. You haven't been beaten before, have you? Qin Ji asked coldly, she was almost speechless. The feeling of being completely seen through was too bad, and she felt like she had no privacy at all. Getting beaten up. How could it be? I'm so loved by everyone, you don't even know how many women are crying and shouting to marry me. Qing Qi chuckled and continued to talk incessantly, but he also realized something was wrong. He he, come on, I just ran into you, I'm just a little excited. Too much talk. Oh, then I also divide people, okay. I'm not just talkative when I see people. Chatting with fellow villagers is what makes me feel good. You don't even know what kind of life I'm living in the Qing family. Qin Ji was a bit dazed, she didn't even know whether Qing Qi's heartless and heartless appearance was just a pretense or a natural act. However, either way, it raised her vigilance once again. This guy is too scary. In just a few words, he can clearly understand the truth of others. Not good, the Fire Phoenix sect has come over. Suddenly, a hustle and bustle came faintly, with some people shouting loudly and groups of refugees fleeing around in chaos. Fire Phoenix sect. Qin Ji was startled and instinctively exchanged a glance with Qing Qi. A major disaster will inevitably lead to chaos, and the famine will make the people unable to make a living. In many places, there are peasant uprisings that have risen up. In the area of Yuzhou City, the fiercest one is the Fire Phoenix sect. In addition to the Fire Phoenix sect, there are also some other uprising members who occasionally engage in wars to compete for territory. Of course, the court will not sit idly by, so there are also many officers and soldiers sent to suppress it. However, when it comes to fighting, the most tragic is still the ordinary people. Quick, park the car over there, lead the horse and run this way. Just a momentary moment, Qin Ji regained her senses and spoke decisively in a low voice. But. Isn't it faster to take a carriage? Cheng Qi had a sudden thought, but before he could speak, he realized that there were people running around on the road, and it was impossible to walk quickly in a carriage. Moreover, the carriage had such a big target, not to mention the Fire Phoenix sect, 
but the arrival of officers and soldiers. It must have been noticed first. At such times, attracting attention is not a good thing. A few furry children from the Chin family all hugged their belongings and jumped off the car. It seemed that this situation was not the first time they had encountered it, and it had already become commonplace. You guys go first, I'll lead the horse. A horse is still very valuable, and in the worst case scenario, it can be killed and eaten meat, but Qin Ji could not have said such a thing. She whispered to everyone to run from the grass by the roadside, while preparing to untie the reins of the horse. Be careful, this horse is a fierce horse. Ching Chi was a bit worried, even the coachman sometimes found it difficult to handle this horse. Although the coachman couldn't hear him, he had encountered many similar situations along the way and skillfully jumped off the carriage, preparing to escape together. Let's turn around and lead the horse again. I didn't lose it a few times before. Ching Chi said urgently, they are all external things. Stop talking nonsense, let's go. Qin Ji shouted in a deep voice, and at this moment, she suddenly became the decisive and decisive one in her past life. Ching Chi was suppressed by her aura, and without hesitation, he followed her words. Qin Ji saw them leave and turned around to hold on to the horse, which seemed to sense danger. The horse pouted its hooves in a somewhat restless manner, and its nose kept breathing. Qin Ji held the string with one hand and helped the horse's neck with the other, constantly scratching and soothing it. The horse's emotions seemed to have eased somewhat. Qin Ji walked up to the horse's head and poked her hand into her collar. In fact, she grabbed a handful of raisins from the space and easily loosened the horse's bridle, feeding it to the horse's mouth. The horse was not afraid of her and opened its mouth to start eating. Qin Ji breathed a sigh of relief in her heart. She was not a reckless person. Since deciding to cooperate with Ching Chi, she had secretly fed the horse several times, mostly by quietly mixing it with grass and feeding it directly by hand, which was the first time. However, the horse probably hadn't eaten good feed for a long time, and this raisin was very attractive to it. Seeing the horse cooperating, Qin Ji led the horse towards the direction that Ching Chi and the others were walking. Fortunately, in the supermarket before, there were two bags of raisins in the randomly grabbed snacks, which really came in handy now. It seems that we need to prepare more next time. Hmm, I heard that Ma really likes to eat sugar cubes. Next time, prepare some candies as well. Just as she took a few steps, Qin Ji suddenly remembered something and quickly wrapped the reins around the nearby grass, then quickly turned around and jumped onto the carriage. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Just want to ask is face pain? You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 10 Just want to ask is face pain Qing Qi has a lot of luggage. He didn't take it away a few times ago, which can be considered as his bad luck but Qin Ji wouldn't try his luck. Quickly put all the things on the carriage into the space, Qin Ji quickly left. Fortunately, the horse is still there, but there is already a man nearby who is timidly peeking here, probably also having an idea for the horse. How much time has it taken? I really want to bring Qin Chi back and see this scene, ask him if his face hurts. Qin Ji quickly stepped forward and pulled the horse up, glaring fiercely at the other person. Seeing that the person was useless, Qin Ji looked fierce and didn't dare to step forward. She quickly turned around and ran away. The reason why Qin Ji asked everyone to go this way is very simple. This direction is not in the direction of Yuzhou City or Yongli Prefecture. The vast majority of people will not come this way, and it looks like there are only bare gravel, no water, no trees, and no one will come. And Qin Ji observed this terrain, there were some hills like small hills, so there should be no problem finding a small depression. It is completely possible to use it for temporary hiding. After walking for a while, I did see Qing Chi and a few children, but I didn't see the coachman. Fortunately, you caught up, hurry up. Find a place to hide first. When Qing Chi saw her, the worry on his face disappeared, but his eyebrows furrowed slightly. Where's the coachman? 
Qin Ji glanced at it and felt that it was not right. Don't mention it, I ran away on my own. Ching Chi is also speechless. I guess it's because I saw Ching Chi causing a lot of trouble again, so I'm afraid I might not have enough to eat. Can I really appreciate his bag of pancakes, young master? Ching Chi still made a few complaints. Qin Ji felt fortunate in her heart that she had not given the food in the supermarket to the coachman before because he had his own dry food and water. Otherwise, it would have left a hidden danger. After all, the food and water in the supermarket are different and easily suspicious. That's good. Qin Ji said indifferently, and Qin Qi was taken aback. He also woke up. Yes, a few children are easy to deceive, and the coachman is not easy to deceive. The food that Qin Ji can bring out will definitely be doubted by ordinary people. Yeah, then let's go quickly. Qing Qi no longer hesitated, besides, I'm used to it. He also ran away from his servant for the first time. As expected by Qin Ji, as the hills turned back and forth, they did indeed find a few valleys. Although they were all bare and had nothing, they seemed to be the kind of rarely visited place that was perfect for hiding. If she really encountered a villain, Qin Ji felt that with her current combat power, three or five men should be able to solve it. If she had no choice, she wouldn't care too much and wouldn't put everyone in the space. She has tried this before. When hugging a girl, she took her to try it while she was asleep, and it was possible to take people in and out of the space. Take a break and eat something. Only when you have something to do can you run fast. Before Qin Ji caught up with them, she picked a light package of Qing Qi's belongings and carried it on her back, pretending that there were still many things left. This is hers. Give the breast slices to Qin Xin Yang, everyone knows this is for a girl. Qin Ji pretended that these foods were exchanged with Qing Qi, just to make things right. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been able to explain the origin of chocolate and milk slices. Thanks to Ching Chi's blessing, everyone can finally use real bowls, after all, in wealthy households, they are still fine porcelain bowls. Although it is not possible to start a fire in order to hide, it is extremely rare to sit down calmly, eat dry food and drink water. Will those people discover us? Qin Wu, after all, was young. Although Qin Ji had a cold face, she still didn't have a long memory. She whispered out her worries. Of course not. We're hiding so hidden. Cheng Qi waved his hand and said nonchalantly. Seeing him so carefree, Qin Ji couldn't help but secretly exclaim in her heart that even if she was trying to coax children, she didn't have to say so much. Hey! Are you also refugees? Just as Ching Chi finished speaking, a voice suddenly came from not far away. Everyone was taken aback, and Qin Ji frowned inwardly. Although her body's five senses had exceeded that of an ordinary person by too much, it was still too slow and dull. Someone was so close that they didn't even notice it. After a while, I saw a young man who was not too tall but very sturdy running over. I just hid here too, it scared me to death. This young man looks like he's only 18 or 19 years old, with thick eyebrows and big eyes, but he feels a bit silly. Qin Ji's heart sank slightly. Surprisingly, someone had already hidden here. This place was not very safe, so she needed to find another place. Cheng Qi slightly tugged at the corner of his mouth. Is it this inch long? He just spoke so much, and now he's slapping his face. My name is Lu Tianhe. Are you also heading north to Yongli Mansion? Can we go together? Lu Tianhe grinned happily and said, I don't have anyone to accompany me. Are you alone? Where are your family members? I don't have a family. I have been working at my boss's house since I was young. Isn't this a disaster? The boss asked me to go to Yongli Mansion to see if there is any work to do. If not, I will come back. Ching Chi looked at Lu Tianhe with a skeptical expression and said, Do you usually eat well? Lu Tianhe looked surprised and said, You can see that too. It's so amazing. 
Ching Chi chuckled and leaned closer to Qin Ji, whispering, this guy must have eaten too much and been kicked out. This kind of guy, big and small, is a first dot class and robust labor force. Even in times of famine, it is very popular, but he is driven away by the owner's ideas. There is only one possibility, which is that it is not cost-effective to keep him. Those who work here usually only manage their own meals, without any serious wages. They are all despised, so they must be eating too much and unable to afford it. Unexpectedly, Lu Tian and Han Han smiled and scratched their heads awkwardly, saying, Yes, I just eat too much and am often despised by the boss. However, I work really hard. I do all the work in the boss's family alone, and I can handle three people on my own. Ching Chi smiled and said. Can we even handle three meals? Lu Tian and blushed with a smile, if you want to talk about food, ten people can't even eat me. No wonder they were kicked out. Who can afford to support them? So you have a lot of strength. Ching Chi asked again. Of course. I can lift the owner's stone mill alone. Qin Ji's heart twitched slightly. Although Lu Tianhe had eaten a lot, his strength was immense, and he could consider keeping him behind. The road was chaotic, and Chang's combat effectiveness was probably too poor. He couldn't protect so many people on his own, and having multiple people could enhance his combat effectiveness. However, at the same time, she expressed terror again towards Ching Chi's ability to guess the truth in just a few words. No, you want to take him with you. Ching Chi seemed to sense her inner thoughts and suddenly whispered to her. End of this chapter.